uh, is it loud for is it loud for everybody? Or is it just me? I don't know. I don't know. Hey, I don't care. It doesn't matter. Hi, happy Friday. Um, so today is a little bit different. Um, you know, I haven't streamed on a Friday in a very long time. Uh, so I'm gonna do something a little different. Oh, that is loud. That is just me. Okay. Anyway, uh, I haven't done this at all in a long time doing a, a Friday night stream. Uh, but tonight, you can see, I don't have my usual blue behind me. Uh, that's because tonight I have a very special guest that we're going to be talking all about live space. Uh, I am going to be recording this, so uh, if I'm not paying attention to chat, it is not personal. Um, I'm just, I want to give Alyssa our undivided attention, um, and we will be recording this for me to chop up and, you know, toss together on YouTube or wherever later, so yeah. Pretty much, Fritz. Pretty much, buddy. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to this. Um, I'm not going to bore you with a whole lot of intro. So what I will do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and swap over. And we have Alyssa with us. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you. Okay. Let me let's see. It's definitely personal. Okay. Julian. But in fairness, though, fuck you. In, but but only you. Well, you and Tom and <laughs> Lolly, because I know he's I know he's hiding in the background. Um, let me make sure. Yeah, this, we should be all good here. You have done nothing yet. Yet, yet. See, yes, exactly, exactly. I feel uh, like our uh, stream communities would get along just fine. I think so, yeah. I think absolutely <laughs> yes. And cr yes, fuck Cracko, but he's not here to defend himself. Oh no, because he's not here to defend himself. Perfect. Premeditated mischief, that's everybody here, Julian. Literally everyone who's a regular here is guilty of premeditated mischief. Um okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and um I'm going to get recording uh just so we have it. And then uh, we'll get started. And yeah, I'm I'm really excited. Here we go. All right. Hi, I'm Zunderscore, and I am very very pleased to have a special guest with me tonight, Alyssa Sweetman, who is the head of community for Live Space, a brand new streaming service uh, that just went into open beta. Um, what uh, last week, I guess. Now uh, that's so something like that. Yeah. Um, but I know this is something the team's been working on for a while, so I wanted to sit down with you, talk a little bit about you, talk a little bit about the service, and uh, just let everybody know what Live Space is all about. So thank you so much for joining me tonight. Yeah, thanks thanks for having me and uh, booting up a Friday stream since that's not your usual. Um, we gotta we gotta make this go kind of quick because I do got some boulder skate to play. Oh, I see. See, <laughs> that's what it is. That's my problem. I had to have an interview scheduled when Baldur's Gate 3 comes out. That's that's on me. That's my fault. <laughs> I, I mean, I should have I should have remembered that Baldur's Gate was coming out, but I actually forgot about Baldur's Gate up until like five minutes before I played it. That's fair. That's fair. So. I, I listen, I've watched several people play it today and it looks really, really good. So I'm excited to see what it, uh, how it turns out. So yeah. Alyssa, let's start off. Let's talk a little bit about you. Like, tell us about you, you know, who you are, a little bit about your work history, some, you know, any fun stuff about you, you know, anything like that. Oh, me. Um, all right. So my friends say I should get better at like bragging. So erring on the side of bragging, I was at Twitch for five years. And before that, I was a second grade teacher. And that transition happened naturally in a very weird way in college. A friend turned me on to Twitch and was like, you got to stream on Twitch. You're already playing video games. Uh, you'll gr you're a girl. You'll make lots of money. Jokes on that person. I got discovered charity streaming at the time. And I created a Twitter. And then I discovered a group that was fundraising for nonprofits. And their whole thing was like a bunch of small people together can do a lot. And I was still in college. So that's how I got introduced to Twitch. And that became like my very big special interest. So even when I went on to be a second grade teacher, I still organized online fundraising events. And that's how I met my now former boss and got hired at Twitch. So it was a very unique path here, um, but I'm very passionate about people connecting. I think it's very important in society that we lean more into connecting with others because if we don't, this capitalism is gonna really wreak havoc on what left we have of community. And 
I, I really think that like, if you have the ability to do something for others, you should be able to. And that comes from like growing up, um, in a very small town with my grandparents and like my grandparents who didn't have a lot were very big on, if you can help someone, you should, even, even if that meant like you didn't have extra. So that is kind of carried without me throughout my life. And if anyone was to look me up on LinkedIn and see like the long list of things I've done, uh, I made Forbes 30 under 30 for my social impact work. So charity and diversity work related to Twitch. Um, that was really cool. I will say that was really interesting because you just kind of submit a form and you have your friends submit a form and you have no idea if you're going to get it. Uh, so that was great. Um, some of the early stuff I did at Twitch was I launched Twitch's like first Black History Month, Women's History Month. I helped 1000 Dreams Fund, a nonprofit start a grant for women in the content creation space to help them get to conventions or upgrade their systems, their streaming setups. So I've done a whole bunch of stuff. And the most notable thing I did before I left Twitch was I helped them. I wasn't there for the launch of, but I helped them develop the charity product. So that was really like what I was over. And I interacted a lot with the community on aspects of things they were unhappy about, like um, marginalized creators who were experiencing hate raids, community members that wanted to grow, but were finding it. So I spent a lot of like, did a lot of community work, but not directly with a community title, but everything I ever did at Twitch was for creators. Gotcha. Okay. And um, talking about the charity tools, uh, I, you know, I actually used those uh, late last year. So in December, um, when I had my second stream anniversary, um, I sat down and I, uh, I started testing out some of the first party uh, charity tools uh, through a, a bot that I work on. And um, we actually raised, um, I think over $2,600 on that first charity drive, which was incredible like i i could not be prouder of my community for really showing up that day and showing like how much they really care um and for um you know for during your time at twitch um i know that one of the things that you were really instrumental in um and you can see i'm i'm actually wearing my shirt today um but uh, able gamers is a is a, a cause that's really near and dear to a lot of folks uh here in my community um, so you were actually instrumental in that big million dollar donation a couple of years ago at GlitchCon, right? Yeah. So with GlitchCon happening, that uh, obviously shifted stuff around and the TwitchCon team came to me and they said, what would you do? And they asked me to give a couple of options and I leaned into disaster relief. That's always going on. I leaned into medical supplies. COVID was at the height, but I said something that was really unique to our community and to online communities, especially gaming is that, um, accessibility is a really big problem. I think we thought a lot more about accessibility when the pandemic hit and we were like, wow, this is actually really hard to use. So to me, when I pitched that, that was the nonprofit that we should give a million dollars to. It was all because accessibility is very important. And I mean, if you want to go from like a business standpoint, the more people who have access to something, the better a business is going to do. Absolutely. And accessibility gives people a way to connect. And I think for the first time in since we've had the ability to connect human technology, we all saw what it was like for someone who that wasn't a choice. That was what they had to do every day from either from birth or from whatever. And so to me, that was why that was really important in that time period. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, I was really, I will say I was really sad because they did not add in any of that reasoning when they gave the million dollars. And I was like, the story, you're not <laughs> telling the story. That's the whole point is telling the story. Yeah. <laughs> um, but everyone, everyone really loved it. Um, the folks at Able Gamers do really incredible work. And sometimes like, I think they worked on the accessibility controller with Xbox for so long before yep. that ever came to life. They did. Um, yeah. So it's really it's really exciting to be able to have been in positions to be able to to do that, especially when it wasn't my personal money because it makes it much easier. Right? Yeah, <laughs> for sure, for sure. It, so. It's a lot easier when someone else writes the check, right? <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. I love it. Um, but I I remember putting together some presentations and research on different options that we could go with, and I was very pleased that we went with Able Gamers that year. That's awesome. Yeah, that is a fantastic cause, and I mean it's it's like you said, the more people that have access to games and from a capitalist standpoint that's that's more money that you make 
Um, yeah. But I mean, they really do have an amazing mission so that everyone can play. And I, that's again, that's something that we care a lot about here. So it's, it was just so cool to, to watch that moment happen. Um, yeah. I actually think um, I was catching up with the founders today. Uh, I think that's a really good segue, like to Live Space around. So Live Space has um, put out not as much communication as they probably would like. Uh, I think there's been a lot of questions around who's behind Live Space, what secret big company owns Live Space, and the answer is like there isn't a big company hiding in the shadows. It's a small group of people. We're a startup. Um, and it's very much a passion play, but I was digging today with them and talking real deeply. I was like, what is the most important aspect of this for you? And it's connection. Um, Todd, you know, the person I directly work with the most, he and I were chatting today about something he and I share where, um, we, we have the phrase for creators by creators. And to some people particularly coming from Twitch, they think very specifically about a certain type of creator, but there's a lot of different ways you can be a creator. And Todd and I were talking about one of the things that we align on is that we're the type of person that if you say something, and it makes me think of another person, we'll introduce you to that person. So we kind of like view ourselves as a creator of connections. And we really want people to be able to connect in a ways that make it super easy. Right now, how many different sites do you use to yeah. connect with people? Yeah, it's ridiculous. And so Live Space wants to be like a central hub where it's not just live streaming. Absolutely live streaming, we wanna nail that, right? But like we win because we give you all these other tools to succeed that you don't always have to be live with. Nice. So l l let me ask you, you've obviously, you've been in this industry for a long time. You've got a lot of experience. Um, You've been in streaming in general, not just as you know, as someone who's worked in it, but someone who's who is a creator um, for several years. With all of these other services that are popping up, you know, and things that are big right now, like um, we see things like Trovo and DLive, and now Kick is is seems to be like the flavor of the week. What makes Live Space different? Why Live Space? And why, in particular, did you decide to join Live Space when there are all of these different options out there? What really spoke to you? To me, it's the non live streaming elements. And I think one of the big things, like that, I've heard from creators who make content is that it's really hard. Creators want to be able to take a vacation, they want to be able to provide value for their viewers or their subscribers or their community when they're not streaming. And everybody who's tried to beat Twitch at Twitch's game is just cloning Twitch or coming really close to cloning Twitch. And I think yeah. that that is like, that's not very inspiring. It's, it, I think it's about innovation. Um, you know, I mentioned we're a startup. That's a, to some people that means that we've got like a bunch of funding or like we have a big VC behind us, but there are thousands of startups out there that do things because they're really passionate about. And that's where a lot of innovation comes from. People hear about startups a lot of the time because they have big backing like Uber and Lyft or Uber and Airbnb have like really fantastic, like silly stories about how they got funded, um, like one line emails and they turn into these behemoths. But it's also true for smaller startups to have been something really passionate and for it to take off and do really well. And I think that um, live space is different because the founder, Spencer, is, is a creator. Um, and it's very important to him that like we don't lose tr sight of like what every decision we do is geared towards being the best decision for the creators that use us. And in terms of like, why us? Um, I think the better question to answer is what happens when Kick isn't handing out money anymore? What happens if you continue to not grow on Twitch? What happens with all of these other platforms? And I think we're thinking about things in a more sustainable way. We're not going to be handing out like contracts we can't sustain. And communities that tend to move for purely monetary reasons are not really invested in like building something. Right. Yeah. Now you mentioned Spencer and he's, 
he's not primarily a gaming creator like you see, you know, the majority of folks that are on sites like Twitch and Kick, right? You know, you talk about live space being for creators of all types. Uh, and Spencer is, he's a musician. So this is something yeah. that's really passionate, you know, that's a big passion of his. Yeah, it's, a, it's extremely passionate to him. And I think like, um, I, I was actually talking on Twitter today about how most products always end up being just good enough or basically good enough. And we're kind of stuck with them. Like Google is a really great example. I know so many people in with Gmail or the G work suite that are like, there's small quality of life features. And I think that for live streaming and when the platform, like trying to get users to do new behaviors, it's actually really hard. I think it's easier to get a user to go to a new place and learn new behaviors than to change the behaviors where a user already is. Right. And so when you think about music, musicians need like time to make, scream into the void, write lyrics, you know, not all things that are like compelling for live streaming all the time. Yeah. And if, if you think about it, like gaming is really easy. I think a really natural fit for live streaming because you can go live and play the same game for 20 hours. Yeah. Versus other content is it's just different. It it wears on your your mental and body in different ways depending on what it is. So I'm like the really big resident gamer um, with the live space group, and everyone has like a different perspective. We're talking about live space being a home, not just for like live streamers, but you, you can come create content on live space without being a, a streamer. We're thinking about like, where do the folks who lost Van House go? We're thinking about where do book talk, you know, they're going to expand into like book clubs and other things. Where do they go um, when they want to expand? And a lot of people like go to Discord, but I'll say this about Discord. I'm in what feels like a million Discord servers. And I can be active in, in two. Yeah, same. Hard same. <laughs> um, so I think that um, there's a lot of options, but LiveSpace is looking for that next evolution of what it means to be a creator and to have tools for creators without having to go, well, you can just use this other service to fix that need or this other service. You know, so we're we're trying to take the best of, of the places that are around and the best features that people like and then evolve that into the next thing. Yeah, and you you kind of touched on it, um, but you said that everybody at Live Space has a different perspective. Like you're the gaming person, Spencer. He's the musician. So it's like because you have this really diverse mix of folks and what they care about and what they focus on, it gives you that opportunity to build something that works well for everyone. And I know you're never going to find that perfect thing for every niche. Like it's, it's, it's not possible, not unless you're specializing in something that's really specific. Right. But to have that broad mix to provide something that everyone can come in and say, yeah, this is something I could use because like you said, not everybody may be live streaming and live streaming is going to be a big part of what live space does. Um, but perhaps, you know, someone's going to use it more like a fan house or a Patreon where they've got posts that are, you know, their public posts, say hey, teasing things that they've got coming up and then subscriber specific things for the folks that are actually supporting them already. Things like that. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I think for me personally, I'm also really excited about it. I'm not very good at holding my own personal discord community for my stream. And I stream so rarely, but I have a really dedicated community, but I would love to interact with them on one place because I know they're watching other streams when I'm not live. They tell me about the other creators they like and they watch, some of which I've introduced them to. And so I think it would be great that they don't have to stay in a near dead discord just to see when I'm going to go live to ensure they know and to keep up with me. And right. I think that that's, that's really powerful. Yeah. For some, for some creators, I also think it can help reset boundaries with parasocial relationships if they don't have to rely on having a discord. Um, I know that's not true for everyone, but I do, I do think about this for myself, especially like sometimes I've interacted with kids. I say kids like younger than 18. Um, and I'm like, wow, I would not have been DMing with this person if I had realized their age yeah. simply because it's like really important to set boundaries and I don't, you know, not just for yourself, but to teach young people to have boundaries. Absolutely. So I'm excited for all the different tools that there are. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it sounds pretty awesome. 
So let's let's get into, you know, everybody wants to know about the money, okay? Because at some point, you know, as much as we all enjoy doing these passion projects, you said it yourself. We live in a we live in a capitalist society. We have to make money. We got we all got bills to pay. So let's talk a little bit about the revenue model. Um, I know just like any service like this, advertising is going to be a big part of it. I, we we know that because it's you know it's how the internet works. The internet runs on advertising. I mean, Google Google is not a technology company. Google is a there's an advertising company that uses technology to get ads in front of people's faces, right? So I know ads are going to be a big part of it, but the, you also have two tiers of subscriptions, and I know the Plus is live now, and there's also a Pro subscription that's coming at some point in the future. So I know Plus is really, for those of us who are on Twitch um, and are familiar with Twitch Turbo, it's going to be really similar to that. Right, where it provides you an ad free experience no matter where you are. But I know on Live Space, there's also a couple of other things where um, you'll be able to watch folks in up to 4K 60 frames a second um, with that, uh, that higher tier subscription and things like that. What other benefits for the viewers are they going to have at the plus tier that you can talk about? So we're still looking at that. I think the two primary features are being able to like watch in 4k or higher transcoding and the ad free i think for gotcha. a viewer those are the most important um it's not super necessary a lot of a lot of people particularly in gaming have really great setups and they think about the viewing experience from watching on their computer but the majority of people are watching on their ipad or like not even an ipad like a like a 50 dollars tablet they got off of amazon maybe their phone their internet's not very good and so one of the things that will help allow every creator to have transcodes and the quality options for their viewers is that by shifting the cost of a really expensive transcoding option to viewers at large, it also takes away their advertising, like our ability to advertise to them um, with, vid with videos. I'm not sure entirely if we're gonna do an, an entirely free site where if you pay for it, you don't see any advertising. Right. Um, Transparently, we're still working out like these things. Like I said, we're very um, early team. And I think that that will help. So a creator can produce that 4K content and it'll look really great, but it'll allow viewers to kind of be met where they are, both from a technological and bandwidth standpoint. Right. And you talk about transparency. I mean, I've been in the Live Space Discord now for a few weeks and I mean, folks have a lot of, you know, really good and sometimes, you know, harsh feedback because this is the internet and it's, this is how it works. Um, yeah. But I've noticed that, you know, for every piece of feedback or every question that has come in, I mean, you've really taken on, as, as the head of community, you've really taken it upon yourself to try to be as transparent as possible and say, listen, this is something we can't talk about right now, or this is something that, yes, we are working on, but we don't know when it's going to be. Like dark mode, for instance. Everybody wants dark mode, right? Like, I'm a, I'm I can't a... say it's sooner than when people are think it will be, but I don't know how soon. Yeah, right, <laughs> soon exactly. TM, right? Yeah, soon TM, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, but I will say that's something that I appreciate is that there's been a lot of transparency um, from you and, um, you know, I, I even see, you know, Todd and Steve and Spencer in there every once in a while, just throwing uh, their two cents in. Um, so it's nice to see that they're actually engaging with the community. I mean, we had our community night on Sunday where we were all playing Fall Guys together, and that was a blast. And then I, I noticed that Todd was making his way, you know, into different uh, chats and just answering questions for people and trying to be helpful. And it was it was really nice to see that there's that kind of communication from the entire team. So that's really cool to see. Um, yeah, I, there's a phrase in startup world called building in public. And, and there's like varying levels of that where you post everything. And I think there's a couple of things. Um, I think that existing creators have given all the grace that they're kind of comfortable giving to companies that are providing services for creators. And so for me coming on as community, the most important thing to me was to set expectations, to not say we were going to do a single thing unless we were sure we were going to do it. And to be very careful about committing to doing something because your idea of a product and my idea of a product can be very different. Yeah. So I like to be very 
and this is probably also my neurodivergence. I'm very particular about word choice, especially when I'm writing. Yeah. Um, and which, which is really helpful. And I think, um, like there was a little bit of a shock when I first came in the discord, everyone was used to being just told, Oh, that's a great idea. And I was like, I was like, we got to start correcting the ship just because you don't know how someone will perceive the way you casually say, Oh, that's a great idea as I'm going to build that product. Yeah. So I've been working on mostly setting expectation. And I think we're getting to the point now where, um, you're going to see a, even more transparency from us. We're going to start recording content with the founders, like talking about why this is important to them. I think the first and foremost thing, because the creators have given so much grace to other platforms, to other services, we needed to set expectations about how we were going to work with people so that, you know, safety, it's the internet. Um, I had coworkers at Twitch who had safety issues being front facing um, or not even front facing their information got leaked. So I think a lot of times when people are calling, like, I want to know every detail, it's like, that's kind of a safety concern. Yeah. And for sure. I'm on the internet really publicly already. And I've set really great expectations. And I think because I did charity and diversity, I've been really lucky. Nobody has come after me. <laughs> and so, but to me, it's really important that like, while they're building what they're building, like they can't be distracted by safety or yeah. having their personalities nitpicked or this and that. So I think setting expectations is really good, getting it so we can be super transparent. And then now we're going to take that extra step of transparency and um, doing more, more of it. Gotcha. I love that. I love that. Um, so we've talked about the viewer side, right? Let's talk about from the creator side. Um, and I know a lot of this is still in flux. Um, there's still a lot going on internally talks about it. Um, but there's, there's also going to be a pro tier at some point. That's going to be a little more expensive, but it's going to get you everything at the plus tier, right? That same ad free viewing, um, the, you know, 4k 60 viewing, um, but there's also going to be additional benefits that are geared specifically towards the creators themselves. Can you give us any idea of what that's like looking like some of the stuff that y'all are considering talking about internally? Um, I'm really bad. I apologize. I need to pull that up because my do not have that list off the top of my head, but it's largely about getting to a space where we can offer a more advanced tooling to creators. So, um, additional storage, um, external video edit um, embedding, which I think you can do that with Twitch now, but I'm not in cer certain like what that looks like, um, but making it easier so you can embed your live, live, uh, live stream into like another place, more emotes. I think that's the biggest thing is everyone is super excited that you don't have to like earn emotes based on how many subs that you have. And so I think that like, you know, we'll give you the option to do that and advanced creator analytics. This one is an interesting one. I've seen like mixed takes about this online, but there is a certain level of analytics that the average person's going to use. And then there is like business level analytics. And there are already some services, like I think Streamer B is what it's called, and a few other yeah. where creators pay for advanced stuff. Um, and we're always looking for identifying. I know someone previously called out, why are his moderators listed on Pro? Um, because we're still working through it. It's also not available yet. So um, as we get to that place of like talking through, and let me tell you, the team is so receptive to my feedback. You know, I'm, I come from a company that already built a product that is similar to what they're trying to build. And I know it can be really frustrating to have someone come in and be like, well, I've had experience and let me tell you, but the team is so great. And they, they ask questions like, what's the use case? And is the, can we, do we have to build it like that? And often the answer isn't that we need to build the product exactly the same. It's just, you need to be able to do the same thing. It can look different. So, and they're really receptive, um, which is again, why like I was so willing to come on and I reached out to them, right? Like they didn't reach out to me, I reached out to them. So they're, they're a solid bunch. I'm really excited to work with them. And I got to say, Steve, our CTO has the patience, um, so much patience. I'm ve a very non-technical person. <laughs> so I get very confused. Sometimes I'll ask a question and I'll be like off in left field and he has the greatest patience ever. So it's been really great working with them. That, listen, I understand. I'm the person that translates, you know, I can take the technical stuff and translate it into actual human speak. It's great. <laughs> so I, tro I totally understand. <laughs> 
Um, so, yeah. yeah, I know the, the advanced analytics is going to be great. I know that's something that a lot of us are going to be looking forward to. Um, and, uh, you know, I honestly, with, you know, LiveSpace is, is going to have an 85-15 split on subscriptions, correct? Yes, um, okay. on subscriptions. And I think uh, someone was posting in there. I think uh, it is not going to be an 85% split for ads, just to call that out. Um, we're still working through what advertising looks like because the, you know, back to the financial model, we won't have just like, we'll have ads for more placements. Like on Twitter, when you scroll, there's an ad and replies. I don't know if like we'll start there, but eventually that could be also a way creators earn revenue is that there's an ad within the, within their reply section type of thing, right? Like, so that's one avenue a creator could earn potentially rad ad revenue where they're not live. Again, not saying that's what's going to be built. I'm just talking about other things that exist that are we are exploring. Right. Um, Absolutely. For, yeah. And for other advertising, um, we're, we're still looking at what that looks like. I think the big thing is um, advertiser brand safety in the sense that if you start a stream today, because we allow you to go live the moment you create an account, I don't think that will it will be that a user day one they activate monetization they'll get access to advertising revenue and that is mostly a safety thing to confirm you're not going live and showcasing the game of thrones or adult content or other things that like advertisers would absolutely uh lose their mind over right so we're still working out exactly what that looks like and we use the language of partner partner programs um, but that's really supposed to convey that the basic way creators earn revenue through a subscription will not be tied to a partner program. You can go sign up for an account right now, turn on monetization and get paid out tomorrow if you get a subscription today. Yeah. So that will always be true. We will be developing, of course, top creator programs. That's just kind of how it's going to like every platform or service that works with creators works is they have multiple tiers and different things based on size and things like that. So it was absolute, there's absolutely going to be those things, but we're working on making them in the most fair way possible. Right. Yeah. And I've seen that, you know, I've already seen folks in the live stream or live space discord talking about they've streamed a couple of times, they've already gotten subscriptions and now they've already gotten paid out, which is wild. You know, um, I know a lot of folks have had their doubts about this is like, it's, is this too good to be true? Is this actually going to happen? And people are seeing that's already happening it's actually going on right now which is wild um like i love that yeah, I, I love that i didn't i didn't realize that it was an auto payout and i saw tweets about it and i was like is that supposed to happen because i thought maybe you had to activate the payout right mm -hmm. and i was like really shocked because i was like wait because i misunderstood i thought it was you could withdraw the money not that it was auto but yeah yeah and we've gotten some feedback around being able to set payout timelines and so we're looking in to see like technically what's possible there nice. but we don't want to make it like if you earn money it's your money yeah we don't want to hold it from you we don't want to make it so that you can't have access to it not only that like we've touched on joked about capitalism a little bit but in today's society when so many people are paycheck to paycheck being able to go live and do some like a subathon or something like that and then get paid out very quickly after yeah. can be potentially life-changing for a lot of people um and especially small mid-sized creators whose community can be really supportive through hard times absolutely absolutely yeah um so we really we, when you're talking about that 85 15 split let's just say like right now it's we know there's there's a base subscription price of 4.99 right now right so for that that 85 15 split i mean you're talking about the creators getting they're getting four and a quarter off of that five bucks right so live space is only taking 75 cents and i know again i know not everything is set in stone but for the pro subscription the what's listed right now is that it's probably going to be around like the 12.99 range for the pro subscription so really you're talking about if someone has three regular subscribers, three monthly subscribers, that that's already paid for itself. And they're I'm already gonna come gonna... back to you and have you make a TikTok <laughs> after that. I love it. 
Um, so let's kind of go back to the music thing for a second because I did want to I did want to ask about that because uh, I know several folks have had questions about this. Um, in the FAQ, uh, you know, Live Space mentions that there are already blanket agreement and gr- agreements in place for several different music licensing bodies. Um, you know, like BMI, ASCAP, things like that. Um, me having worked in the radio industry before, I understand those blanket licenses, they, they cover a lot of things and they don't cover a lot of things, right? They're very specific for each individual, not just format, but also for each individual organization. Um, so talk to us a little bit about sort of what the vision is for that, what that will eventually mean for creators who are streaming on live space and things like that. Yeah. So first, let me put a disclaimer. When you start talking about agreements, copyright, and usage terms, you are now entering into a legal conversation. I want to let everyone know I am not a lawyer. I am not an expert in music licensing. But what I, and I want to add one caveat that regardless of what LiveSpace's licenses are, you, if you want to reuse your content on another place, if you do not have the rights to use that content on YouTube, on Twitter, on TikTok, on Twitch, or wherever else you take the content, you will, it's not covered. It is, whatever licenses they have, and we will put out a much more robust um, communication plan around that when, when we're a little bit ready for that. But just really important, I want everyone to know that like live space having a license does not protect that piece of content when it leaves live space. So that's first and foremost. Um, right now, I believe the licenses that we have um, are the performance licenses. I don't know what that means. Transparently, I'm That's not. That's fair. That's fair. Um, but this is Spencer's like very well knowledgeable area. And the goal is to find a way to work with these companies from the start. And I believe the hope is that because we're going to them and saying, this is what we're doing, we can get them on board rather than being like, you've lost all this money already. Uh, We've been around for 10 years. And then like, it's a public fight, right? We want to come with with open arms and say, this is what we're building. This is our vision. Let's work together. And when we have more robust, we'll put out, you know, a very good documentation around like, this is what this license means. And this is where you can find a list of this catalog. So it's it's very interesting um, music or copyright and licensing, not even just for music, just in general, is such an interesting topic and yeah. very complex. Yeah, absolutely, so. absolutely. But again, I think it 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 speaks to live space is not a place for gaming creators. It is a space for all creators. And even if you're gaming, I know a lot of folks, they love to have music playing in the background on their streams. Um, there's a lot of services that provide that. Um, Pretzel is a big one. Uh, Twitch had, uh, what was it, soundtrack that they had for a little while uh, that did yeah. that. Um, so, you know, there's there are these kind of agreements in place, but it seems like Live Space is focusing a lot on that kind of stuff, again, to tailor themselves to be a place for any creator, which I... I just love that. That's fantastic. Yeah, and when I when I say any creator, I think it's um a little bit on our our work to help people understand that when we say creator, we don't just mean these mega people that when you Google, you're going to find on a top 100 list. We're talking about the casual creator, the creator that is like looking for connection. Because there are many more casual creators than there are career creators. Yep. And I think that a lot of tools are optimized for a lot of different things, but they're not optimized, in my opinion, for the casual creator. And that I think that's where life space win. Live space wins is that we're not one thing, we're many things, and you can create content as you feel comfortable, as it fits into your life at any point in time. Yeah. And that's I mean, I started streaming almost three years ago. Uh, I finally decided, all right, let's let's do this and see what happens. But this was in late 2020. Um, you know, we are, we are a few months into this raging pandemic people, everyone's at home. Um, I'm, I have suddenly been fully remote for the last several months. Um, and I don't see any of my people and me being the extrovert that I am, I have to be around people. I need to be around people and absorb that energy. It doesn't matter what we're doing. I could just be in the room with someone. 
Um, and you know, a lot of the folks in my community know I'm sort of like the designated service extrovert for a lot of them. Cause I have a lot of introverts in my community. So, you know, just being in the room with them, you know, they can, they can do their thing and not have to interact with me, but I'm still here and I'm still absorbing that energy from them and it's not draining them so much. So it works out really well. So I started streaming as a way to be able to connect and reconnect with people um, because that's, I need that human interaction. Um, I, I had a full-time job at the time. Like I, I worked full-time, you know, I, I couldn't make a career out of that. I had a 40 hour a week job that I had to go to Monday through Friday. So, um, I'm absolutely that casual creator that had to go and, you know, do a couple of nights a week here on Twitch, um, and start building up a community. And that's the thing that I really love about live spaces. It does think about that casual creator, like, are there, you know, are, are there plans to make it where folks can grow and become something bigger if, if they get hit with that, you know, that bit of magic luck? Sure, absolutely. But to have that focus on the small creator, the casual creator, you know, like that's, that's a huge thing. And I think that means a lot to a lot of folks because, you know, we're looking for a home like that. And a lot of these services, they're, they're catering, they're, they're courting big names, um, you know, like Kick is a perfect example. They just signed this ridiculous deal with XQC, and okay, great, that's that's great. But what about you know those of us who don't have tens of thousands of concurrent viewers every time we stream, right? And that's so. I think this is a great time. Remember, I messaged you and I said I might be teasing an announcement. So I think this is a the perfect time for that. Okay. Um. So one of the things that like a lot of creators have been asking is like, are we going to be offering mega contracts? And if you read our blog post, you saw that the answer to that was not really no, because we want to build something that's sustainable. We want to build something where people want to be here. They're going to be here for the long term. And so that's why I am so happy to drop a little bit of an announcement. It's more of a tease um, that we will be offering 1000 creators, 100% subsplit minus payment processing fees for one year. Whoa. Um, there will, yeah. <laughs> we are so convinced that at the end of one year, those thousand creators will stay on live space because they will fall in love with the community, with the staff and everything that we want to do that we will be like, we're, we're going to do it. Um, don't have any other details. I can say that we'll put out a blog post and we're going to be very transparent about what the requirements are um what the contract requirements will be and all of those things that'll be a future thing so this really talks this really plays into what you were talking about how you know there's not going to be like we have here where there's affiliate and partners so much and you have to meet just like you you hit this thing you apply and then if you know if they like you enough you get in like this is this is a really niche thing like this is a really specialized program that's wild that's fantastic yeah, um, I think I think like from from our perspective, we need to show creators. So for any social platform to grow, you have to have users, and we know the best people to help us grow are some mid-sized, smaller, medium. I'm trying to think of a way to combine medium and large, but I can't. Um, creators are like the best core communities to have, and what we want to do is basically it's like our way of making a promise to them that. We think you're going to love it. We want you to fall in love with us. And to do that, we need to convince you it's worth your time to come over here. Well, That's cool. even if it's only for a year to try it out, we get a thousand creators to come over. They get a hundred percent sub sub split minus processing fees. And that's, that is like one way to like anchor and grow again. Like you've touched on it really well. Like we're not going after just gamers. So we're going to be spending a lot of time. Like I'm actually really interested. Can I get book talk to come over to live space? Um, as an example. So that is just going to be like our starting point. And we're going to be looking across a lot of different content categories, but we're going to be starting with live streaming and those thousand creators. That's amazing. That's really, really cool. Um, so let's, let's say we've got, you know, these thousand creators, you get them, they, they sign on, they're getting their hundred percent minus processing fees. All right. They're bringing their communities over and everybody's starting to use live space now. Right. So 
what kind of stuff do they have looking that they can look forward to in the next year? What kind of features? Like what's what's on the roadmap? Because I know there's again there's a lot of stuff people are asking for. <laughs> so many things. You know, <laughs> like there's there's a list a mile long of all of this shit that we want to see. Like again, dark mode and mobile app and um. I know one of the things that just got done was uh, upping the character limit for your posts and your feed. So, like, what's the what's the big stuff that's coming up that folks can look forward to, so that when they bring their communities over, they can actually see this thing continue to evolve and grow. All right. So, I think that the number one thing is that are like most interim is, of course, bug fixes. That's always at the top of the list, um, but uh dark mode subscriber only posts we're integrating with stream elements first i think i think those things are kind of important like a lot of folks like a core part of live streaming is being able to reward users with on-screen stuff so stream elements which also means bots we've talked about um your bot there's another bot that reached out so api access is is really important for us and then I think we're going to be working really hard to fast follow with subscriber only posts and gifted subs. And the thing I'm most looking forward to that I didn't realize how much I loved until until I was at LiveSpace and didn't have it was clips, like the ability to clip content so I can yep. show other people this one thing. So those are all things that uh, we're super excited for. There's so many things we're working on. And when I say like we're such a small team, we are such a small team. I see Spencer answering support tickets at three o'clock in the morning. Um, I'll wake up to a message at 6 a.m. about a bug fix. Like they're working around the clock. I think that's evident from them posting in the Discord. So like when we're when I'm when me as a person am asking folks to give life space a chance, I want you to think about this as like everyone has been like, we want an underdog. We want someone who's going to come in and shake things up. We want someone who's not just here. Like, yeah, we want to make money. Let's let's like not, not pretend we're a business. We need to pay our bills. I need I need to pay my bills, right? We do want to have a successful business, but to us, having a su successful business is won't happen if we don't do everything right for creators. And I can't say we'll always get everything right. We're human, but we're also not a mega corporation or a set of investors trying to funnel up funnel users to another business that we have. We are simply doing this because we are very passionate. Like I'm not at live space full time. I do live space in addition to a full time job and I am very active and it's because I'm very passionate and I believe live space could go the distance. I love that. I love that. So then let me ask you of all of these things that are coming up um, and all the things that you're excited about. What's the one feature, the, if you could pick just one, what's the one that you can't wait to see? Um, it's really hard to say because we go back and forth on like what we are and aren't doing. Um, I think for early days, the thing I'm most excited about is right now your, your Twitter-like feed is only who you follow, but um, very soon, sometime before the end of the year, it'll be that like, you'll be able to discover content because someone you follow commented on something else. And there will be discovery elements through posting, which I think is is great. And we upped the posting amount to 2000. And if you go search a title or title, a subject in the search bar, it pulls up anything with a live stream title, a username or a post. So posting outside of streaming is going to be huge. And I'm super excited for it because I'm addicted to Twitter and I would love to get off Twitter someplace less toxic. So yeah, for sure. But full text searching is already there. I can go search for anything and I'll find any post that has that term in it. Yeah, that's so cool. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so then let's, let's kind of, you know, as we start to wrap up here, I know a lot of folks still might have their doubts, you know, again, the 8515 thing might be too good to be true or, you know, charging creators a pro subscription that feels, maybe it feels icky to them. Um, even though it's honestly like not that much in, in the long term. Um, or, you know, again, live space is a small company. They're not, you know, somebody with say like kicks backing that has all of this, this huge money behind it that you can go publicly look up all of these figures. 
So, you know, there's not a lot of public information about this, what's, you know, obviously a very small company. So for the folks that have those doubts, what would you say to them to, to you know, help alleviate some of that? So I think first I would say that, like, you're going to see things like outdated uh, FAQs or out outdated information. Even mega companies have outdated information um, on their site, like, it doesn't matter what company it is, you can find outdated information. So I would I would say that, like, keep in mind that, like, if a big company is not struggles to keep like technical knowledge or FAQs or help pages updated, that's not anything to be alarmed with. If we're not keeping ours updated, um, we're in a lot of spaces at once, right? Like we're on all of the social media platforms trying to keep track of conversations in discord. And I, I can't say what the future holds, right? Like, I can't say, like, we're never going to go away. Like, Twitter couldn't say that. And look where it's going. Um, I think what's most important is that we build the right thing. And that if somebody has questions or feedback, um, I'm really willing to engage with most people. Uh, i am got really thick skin. I've been been in the game a long time, working with creators a long time, you know, Managing communities too. This is not my first community. I was in community management for fun before I was at Twitch. So I think that like if you've got doubts, um, it's reasonable. Creator space is scary. Companies go under, but give us a shot. You know, I'm not asking you to move over all the way. I think that it's it's okay to have hope, and you know, give us feedback. Like we're listening, and I think just being really mindful that like we're people too. And like I said a little bit earlier, like safety is really important to me for everyone. Like I really harp on that with them um, just because I've seen it go wrong. Um, and that's that doesn't mean everyone who's got feedback is that way, but you don't know on the other side of the computer screen who someone is. Yep. So just be mindful that we're on the internet. We know we're on the internet. We're gonna be as transparent as we can um, I'm going to say straight up sometimes I'm not going to answer that right now. Sorry. But other than that, like we hope to be, we really feel like we are the thing that people are looking for. And we feel like we're going to be able to fill that gap and give people that new space to be. I love it. I love it. So what is the thing that you, you know, we talked about features, but just overall, what are you looking forward to most on this journey? Like, I know this is, this is a big deal for you, right? You, like you said, you've been in this industry a long time. You've been doing things like this, whether it's been your job or not for years. So what are you looking forward to most on your journey at LiveSpace? So for me personally, I really love connecting people. Like not, not even just like in professional settings, but um, like in an interview, like a job interview, I would call this skill as an amplifier. I like to amplify other people's work. Um, I have ideas, but I'm not anywhere near as passionate about my own ideas as I am for other people's. And so for me, I think like I get to take a bunch of historical knowledge from working with creators who create content in a live space. Um, pun intended, I guess, or unintended. Nice. Um, nice. And the knowledge of like what creators get about easily frustrated about and how things can come across wrong, right? Like sometimes the communication problem is simply that like, we think we're saying one thing, I get to give props to Dan for CEO of Twitch when he made this comment on um, Jake Lucky's thing of like, communication is hard. And like you could ask a product idea or give feedback around something and you could get two different things. So I get to have all of that prior knowledge and go down this journey again. And so few opportunities in life do you get to do something you're really passionate about a second time. And I get to come on earlier in the journey. So for me, I'm really excited about that because I have, a, I feel so much insight that can maybe potentially help us skip some hiccups yeah. in the future. And that's what I'm really excited about. For sure. And I think, you know, you bring experience like you've been there. You've seen you've seen some of the things that do and don't work. So, you know, the things that, hey, let's try this and let's avoid this other thing. Right. So that's I think that's huge. Um, OK, last thing. I want to hear your best elevator pitch. Give me the TLDR 
tell us why Live Space. Because it's the only creator platform you'll need. Wow. If that doesn't cause you to go look at the website, I'm not sure what will. Wow. Okay. Um, I like it. But that's that's my vision. It's the only creator platform you're going to need. Um, yes, there's a there's a period where we've got growth, but once you're here and all of the tools, and the thing is, is like monetization, uh, we have like the one tier of sub right now. We're talking about, does do we add additional sub tiers or do we make it so you can sub to, so offline content is an additional sub. Like we don't know the answers to those things yet, but we are thinking about how do we give creators tools they need, tools they want, make it the best place for community to be built and engage with. And, you know, along the way, hopefully people make a living doing it, right? I love it. I love everything about it. All right. Hey, Alyssa, thank you so much for taking the time to come talk with me. Uh, this has been fantastic. Um, if you aren't already on Live Space, it is live.space go there create an account there are already some great creators over there i've got to spend some time with them already it's been an absolute blast i cannot wait to see how this platform grows and evolves uh follow me over there i'm underscore there just like i am pretty much everywhere else and i'm uh i'm really looking forward to see what happens yeah for some of you you might get your username for the first time ever <laughs> that's true yeah get in on the ground floor folks get it now all right. Thanks, Alyssa. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. All right. That's the, uh, that's the recording part. Um, for those of you in chat, thank you. This has been, I appreciate y'all hanging out and, um, y'all have had a lot of good conversation in the chat while we've been talking about stuff. Um, do you have time for, to do a little Q and a? Sure. All right. Uh, if you have questions, for Alyssa, throw them in the chat. Let's see what we got. Um, I know, like, uh, for my folks, you know, we're we're looking forward to again dark mode because you know we all have either old eyes or technology eyes, and we, you know, everything in here except for the the bright light. Tom, god damn it! How many times do I have to tell you stop asking people about a hypotenuse? <laughs> Oh shit, the ad break started again. Um all right, we'll give folks a minute to get questions then chat and let me You know, it's uh it's so funny. You're um I'm not an extrovert. Oh yeah, that's 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 my that's my problem. I am. That's, that's, that's the, that's the root of all of my problems is I absolutely am. Uh, yeah, I, um, I'm not, in fact, uh, my friends find me the most engaging if they need me to solve one of their problems, <laughs> which I think is why community is, is so well suited because I like helping and solving problems. So community makes a perfect fit. But if I didn't like to solve people's problems, <laughs> I'd be in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, that's I, that's why I've been an IT and dev for so long. I like to solve people's problems. I just do it by rolling my face across the keyboard and hoping that the magic box does what we want it to do. Steve, Steve, good to see you, buddy. Thanks for hanging out. And uh, Steve, I think we should talk later about some stuff because, uh, yeah, you're building some cool shit over there. Uh, Star Wars Kid fan. Of course you came in late, of course. So Star Wars Kid fan uh, used to actually work uh, for me at my day job. So we like to give her a lot of shit when she comes in. Um, but I think this is actually going to be a great question for Steve because he's here. Um, but she asked, but, you know, a live streaming website is m the most costly when it comes to servers. How are you managing that? Um, and I know f uh, some of that... Uh, it's been talked about there's there's some infrastructure um doing some things with like cloudflare caching and things like that um but is there anything that you know i know you said you're not technical but do you have anything i do know some of this actually okay good good perfect hold on hold on i think i think we uh okay so we, we say in our blog post um 
Right now, what we're using is not what we're going to be using in the end product. The end product is gonna be primarily, I believe, Oracle. Um, so we won't be using AWS's IBS, Twitch white label markup service. Yeah. Uh, the other part of that is I think like, there's only so much we can reduce costs from a technical standpoint. I think this is not a technical answer so much as just a general rule of you can only shrink something so much. Yeah. Um, so we're doing as much of that as possible, but on the flip side, again, we have many more places to place ads and, and user subscriptions. We have two tiers, yeah. right? Like, so, um, some of that stuff is going to help offset music license costs. Some of that stuff's going to help off offset the cost. Right. But it's mostly about just like making the cost management a yeah. little bit better. Gotcha. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, Astral asks, as content creators, besides bringing our community members in, what can we do to help live space in any way? So I think the biggest thing is, um, telling people about us. Uh, it sounds, it sounds so, so silly, so simple maybe, but tech talks, I think could be really impactful. Um, talking about the split, how much you like the staff, uh, like the community, um, why, why you're trust us. I think that's the other thing people want to know why you're willing to trust us. And so I think sharing that even in, in your circles on social media, those are going to be early days, most important. And I know that. From my perspective, I don't know if you noticed, but I don't like to look at the camera. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not a great person to record TikToks. So I've been reaching out to community members who are really passionate asking if they'd make some TikToks for us so we can put content. And to me, um, for TikTok and like our videos, we had we put out our first one. Shout out to OG Goblin for being the first one and editing it for me. So great. Yeah, that turned um, out great. He he did a he did a spectacular job with that. That was so good. I I could I I looked at like his following across socials and I he must just be starting out, but his his content quality is incredible. And um so I think, you know, like my structure for TikToks are creator first and then at the very end say why you like live space. And that's what we're doing working with creators, but telling people to sign up, even if they don't necessarily start streaming, getting them to post, telling other people to go follow them, engaging. I'm really excited about the feed. Like, I don't know if y'all know this or not, but I love Twitter. And so I'm really excited about the feed. Yeah, I like the feed too. Like I'm, I, it's just, especially now that Twitter is whatever the fuck it's doing um, with Elon Musk at the helm. Uh, now we've got so many other different places where people have scattered, you know, a lot of people went to Mastodon and now a lot of people are going to blue sky and a lot of people are now on threads, which is just Instagram Awful. with more text. I'm sorry. Uh, yes. It's just okay, Instagram with text. Threads, threads did not appeal to me. And everyone's like, no. but you love Twitter. And I was like, I feel, I was like, I love chaos, but I'm lost and overwhelmed. And it's not even the content I want to see. Textagram. Textagram. Yes, that's yeah. What we should <laughs> Perfect. Thomas, he's so. he's he's our he's our stuff namer. That's what he does. Um, so, has the team identified ways that moderation tools can be improved from what we're used to uh, as it's getting implemented? So, this is a multi-part answer. The first answer is that I think that the tools that exist today on Twitch are actually really good. They've done really great work, and I think what we have an advantage is is that we don't have to build up a debt of not having moderation tools. We're starting with moderation tools early on. We're starting with a lot of knowledge around how people um, use attack vectors because you know it's kind of public information at this point. And so that's one avenue. The other thing that we'll like be looking at too um, is the posts. So a lot of harassment happens on Twitter. And I think one benefit from a safety perspective for creators, I just thought of this, is that when you post on Twitter, Twitch can't do anything if you're saying slurs, right? You got to be like pretty far across the line for off platform stuff, right? Yeah. When you post on live space, that's tied to one account. Yeah. So if you're an asshole on live space, it doesn't matter if you were live or not, you were an asshole and you will receive whatever necessary like repercussions from that. So I think that's a, that's kind of a positive. I just realized. <laughs> I like that. No, I like that. Cause I mean, if you're, you you build a place where everyone is doing they're doing their everything for their creative stuff. Um, if if they fuck up in one place, 
that place is gone, you get the boot. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's really good. I think, uh, yeah. Gotcha. I love that. And yeah, I, that, that really ties into Tay's question. You know, what are some of the measures being put in place to prevent or minimize the trends of malicious individuals to do hateful botting and stuff like that? But that's basically, yeah, some kind of thing. So I can't, we can never talk about it from a technical standpoint. Um, right. It's just not smart to share that information publicly. But yep. what I can say about my personal experience being connected to the safety community is there are some really tight knit folks who do safety not from a product standpoint, but like identify trends. Mm -hmm. And I think building a relationship with this tight knit community that I'm a part of um, is going to be really important. I think starting and talking with the people who are most targeted, so black women, trans individuals, starting there and talking with those people around the like things. A lot of these creators also have mega block lists of words, right? So reaching out and getting those resources early and making it much more difficult for there to start yeah. hateful content to start. Right. And I think um, I, I shared this on Spot on Me podcast episode that's not out yet with Khalif Williams, but it's really important to remember that like, even if you don't agree, and I'm going to put politics in air quotes because everyone has a different def definition of what that means, um, regardless of what you believe in, being awful to other people is just not okay. And that's not the place we want to build. We don't want people to build a, a lifestyle and a content out of just being awful and hateful. Because there's a big difference in sitting in your living room by yourself, being an asshole privately with other people and going to other people's homes and other places to be an asshole. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, Well, as, as, as someone put it the other day, if I came into your house and pulled down my pants and wiped my ass all over your furniture, you'd kick me the fuck out, wouldn't you? So it's not, you know, it's when you come into someone else's house, that's different. And you get shown the fucking door. Yeah. And there's different rules for your house. So we could say like your house is your stream. Mm -hmm. Not not different rules on live space. Like there's not different rules for those spaces. But, but like, in general, but like, like, like I might, I, I say fuck a lot. And some people might not like saying fuck a lot. I do. So in when I'm yeah. in their house, I don't do that. When you come here, that's okay. That's different. And yeah, that's outside exactly. of the community guidelines. Um, and then there's also like the aspect of like, so on Twitch, we've got your house and my house. On live space, we've got a feed now where people can text. And so there's even a different set of rules when you go to the park. We call the feed the park. Mm, um, I like that. Where, and that and that's kind of based around community guidelines and, and social aspects. And one thing that I really love um, that I noticed really early on is in our community guidelines, we explicitly define harassment. So it's super clear. If someone asks you to stop and you continue, we've clearly defined that. You don't have to guess. I love that. I mean, that's kind of silly. People should know that, but I like that we're really clear about it. Well, that's the thing. Like people should know it, but people don't necessarily, or they, they kind of, they try to work in that gray area where it's like, mm, well, I didn't exactly do this. It's like when you explicitly define that stuff, that's a, like, it makes it a lot easier to have to make those decisions. Um, Allie Beth asks, as a crafter and maker who sells her work, uh, she does a lot of things like especially beadwork, things like that. Would connecting e-commerce posts to this platform be something that's supported? So I think we listed in the blog post. Uh, did we? Yes. Uh, no. Okay. Well, I can't tell. My eyes are not reading at all. Um, there, yes, online shop integration. We are trying to figure out the best path so that you can integrate a shop. I don't think we're trying to get an e-commerce business. That's like a whole other ball game with its very own legal hoopla stuff. Mm -hmm. But we are trying to figure out what's the best ways that if you want to sell merch or in this case, your artwork, you don't have to leave LifeSpace to do it. Right. So we are working on trying to do that. We're trying to make it LifeSpace, the experience on LifeSpace a little bit more modular. I guess is the right way to say it. So you can add a bunch of more stuff. We use um, phrasing like extensions or plugins. The idea is to get, if you can make it as simple as you want on this site or as very advanced. So I think third party developers are gonna really love LifeSpace once we get to the, having that documentation public. <laughs> uh, 
Fawn asks, uh, says, my question may not be something that you can answer, but would there be a possibility for users to create merch campaigns with LiveSpace to let us use the logo in our products? For example, could I sell a sticker with my, with you know, with Fawn's VTuber sitting on the LiveSpace logo or something similar to sell on LiveSpace exclusively? So uh, I actually did bring this up with Todd and Spencer a few weeks ago around how there used to be a program for Twitch with Teespring where if you were a Twitch partner, you could have the logo. And so since we don't have um, partner programs, we are figuring out the best way to do that and set up um, like a set of guidelines of, around what that looks like because we wanna be make it as simple as possible if we have to manually approve things for it, then it's probably not going to be super, a super great experience for anyone, y'all and us. So yes, we're exploring it. Have we decided that we're committing to it yet? No. It's basically, you have to sit down and figure out brand guidelines first, and then well, and how then, are then we going to let people use that? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. Cool. That's okay. Tay, don't worry about it, buddy. Um, you'll be able to watch the VOD, uh, and I'll have this up on, I'll have the VOD up with the Q&A section on YouTube in a couple days, um, and then sometime next week, I will have the actual interview portion up on YouTube as well, so and we'll have that all up. Yeah. So you can catch up on anything that you missed. Also, Tay, don't eat the bath bombs. I mean, don't let kiddo eat them either, but you don't eat them, so... Uh, is there currently a space where we can, as members, submit suggestions for platform events like Chain Streams? Is a Chain Streams like a raid chain? Like a like a raid chain, something like that. Tay, is that is that what you kind of what you mean? Oh man, you just gave me an idea. Let me write this down. Uh, like a raid train. Okay, yeah. Okay. Uh. We have raids in general on the roadmap, um, but you gave me the idea. So what I wrote down was a product that allows the creator to opt into a raid train and then our system would make a big event about it. And then you would just raid the next one. Oh, that's cool. That's I don't, cool. I, that sounds really complicated and sounds like it would need a little AI with scheduling and things like that. So it would know to go to the next creator if one creator's not, but very cool idea of making it. I like that though. Raids are. Raids are not yet a feature. We're discussing what that looks like, how to execute it. Um, yeah, but I know it's I know it's really important. That's also like how you grow the community in general is mixing everybody and saying hello to everyone. So yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, we had that event on Sunday, and that was that was fantastic. Like the fact that you know you got that thrown together really quickly, um, and Pruitt was there to be able to host that. That was that was cool. That was cool, and I'm looking yeah. forward to doing more of that stuff. But yeah, especially for charity events. Charity events. Now, Tay, you missed you missed the first part of it because uh, I know you you've been busy. Um, but when you say charity events, uh, that's kind of her forte. That's you know she's big on it. Yeah, it's kind of what my whole career is built around. Um, yeah. All right, so I guess I will be a little braggy, not to brag. But to brag, no, please I've brag. Nonprofits ra raised over three hundred million since twenty sixteen around the globe. That's pretty fucking impressive. Yeah, um, I'm not the person that asks people to fundraise. Like, I'm not a fundraiser, but I'm really good at devising strategy to get there. So, I mean, I guess as much as anyone has a career, like, <laughs> <laughs> I, when did we go from calling it a career to a job? I have a job. My job focus is around one area. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. That's fair. I have this is my job right now. <laughs> so um yeah. cool all right do we have any last questions before we wrap up uh i know that i know that you're itching to get out of here because Baldur's gate is is out so oh hey goblins here uh hey everybody don't know if anyone has asked this but i know there won't be any partner program but there's a plan to integrate a sponsorship program that's a great question um, i like that when you say sponsorship program, do you mean the ability for a brand to put on a bounty board where like 
you can, as a creator, go claim that or like an influencer marketing service where we manually match creators with brands. Well, now, oh, now you OG Coke. Nice. Astral OG will be looking for that Coke, so please send it. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll kind of ask on my own. Um, I know Stream Elements has a, you know, they have their programs where uh, they basically will try to do matching based on specific like um, genres or titles and um, metrics and things like that, and um, they'll work with companies to develop those sponsorships. So I know like Raid Shadow Legends, everybody can do Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> <laughs> God, if I get one more... You got to admit that that marketing is so good because now it's even a meme and people talk about Raid Shadow Legends God, for I, free. I hate it so fucking much. <laughs> it's so oh, I hate it. Did but I you're, Jimmy you're not Kimmel wrong. Or some other late night host to do something one year. Oh, I don't even remember. Um, but they're like, a masterclass in like obnoxious marketing, which they works are really well. Yeah, I mean, it gets people talking, and that's the point. So you know. But I mean, you know, Stream Elements has things like that where they've got, uh, you know, sponsorships for games like Raid Shadow Legends or for services like HelloFresh does a lot with them to where, you know, folks on their streams, they'll get the they'll get like their first, you know, couple of boxes for free and a little yeah. bit of, you know, a commission for the first like however many dollars that they're, they sell through a, a commission link for that and things like that. So. So I think. All right, so I'm going to give a little bit of contextual information here that's kind of unrelated to live space. Um, at my day job, I am at a marketing licensing services agency. And I can tell you that selling influencer marketing is actually really hard because there are so many services. So I would love to say yes, that we would build it. But I've only heard of like five or six companies using stream elements as tool. So if we do build it, it may not be something that is like highly prioritized within the next year, maybe two, maybe three, simply for the fact that um, we're going to integrate with stream elements, right? So you'll be able to do sponsorships through live space and stream elements. So the, you'll be able to do those things, but as a priority for, for us, just knowing what I know about how hard it is to sell and how many competitive um, services there are selling exactly that program. It's really tough. So we definitely won't prevent creators from ever having their own sponsorships. Um, as long as they fit within the community guidelines asterisk. Um, but, and then I guess, like you said, if we would ever have a, um, sponsorship program, like where we, I'm assuming that means like sponsor creators to do certain content. So I can't imagine a world where we don't do that in the future where we don't say, you've got a really cool content idea, let us help you make it. Um, that is probably a year off at minimum, just because there's a lot of things we need to, to focus on. Um, who knows, we could hockey stick. It's a fun, fun uh, startup word everyone likes. We could hockey stick tomorrow and then that could change the conversation. But I can't imagine a world just also like as the community person, they got to give me tools to make the communities like us, right? To make yeah. the community still love us and things. And so I can't imagine a world in which I don't ever have a budget, right? So short answer is yes, but I don't know what they'll look like or when or what our qualifications would be. Gotcha. Okay. And Goblin and Astral, I hope that that answers your question. Um, let's see. Tay asks, uh, can there be a program once we get like your first 10 to 25 subs, you get a one-time code, like 10 new subs can use a discount next sub, maybe help push those starting creators off the ground. So I guess like creating your own little like incentive to help grow your community a little bit. Um, and I think that that's really going to tie more into the program that you announced earlier, right? The thousand creators, it's going to be something that's, that's probably going to be the best bet yes. for that kind of thing. So if you weren't here um, towards like the early-ish middle part, um, no extra information other than this at this time, but we will be um, putting out a blog post with all of the information. We're going to be offering 1,000 creators, 100% subsplit minus, minus payment and processing fees for one year, because we are that convinced by the end of one year, you'll have fallen in love with LiveSpace. So it's not exactly as giving a discount to like your next subs, but it does absolutely um, monetarily incentivize 
even if only for a year, bringing your community over. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, Tom asks, do you have a ballpark idea of when you'd like to leave beta? Like what does done look like to you? So what is, what is, what is live space 1.0? What, you know, from a high level? Cause I know, I know features are in flux and I know this, this stuff is changing daily, right? Um, okay. But what does 1.0 so, look like from a high level? I think that for me, and we haven't answered this question, so I'm not really necessarily answering on behalf, behalf of LiveSpace because we have not sat down and had this conversation just yet. But for me, I think it's when we have the minimum amount of moderation tools needed to make the site viewable and accessible without logging in. So right now you can't see any live streams without logging in or chat. Um, not that moderation tools do much for that, but I think that changes the vibe on people flooding if they can see a live stream without signing in, then they can't necessarily flood anything if they're not willing to take the time to make an account. So I don't have an exact answer, but for me, I think there are like some minimal, like bare minimum stuff we need to do to do most of the stuff that we, that spent, we put out a tweet about most of those things and a little bit of some moderation stuff. But that again, and that, a mobile that, app. I think we need a mobile uh, and, app and mobile app. Yes, yes, and mobile app. But again, that comes back to trust yeah. and safety, which I know is a huge. You know, that's something that's very near and dear to you. That you've worked with those teams a lot in the past. You understand a lot of those struggles and how it, crucial it is, especially today, um, where you know, let's call it what it is. Shit bags are getting more creative than ever. So finding a way to work around the shit bags so that you can create a platform that is safe and people feel safe is yeah. a big deal. And we can look at Blue Sky for a second. Blue Sky is having a lot of issues right now. If you've been following the news with Blue Sky, yes, their CEO they are. and some moderation stuff, they don't have a dedicated moderator team or they don't have, they're not thinking about those things yet. They had VC money, they've got tons of users and they're not thinking about that yet. And they're thinking about it now because they're in the news headlines. I can say that we already have somebody who is thinking about this, already focused on this. We are already constantly revising policy what you see it will always be updated. Um, and so I, I like that's that's just different. Like most startups who are building a social platform do not think about moderation this early because typically moderation can hurt growth, but we know long term that's super important. Yeah. And you know, me personally, um, I spend a lot of time doing research around trends on the internet, influencer marketing. That's like outside of just like my passion for the creator economy, like it's my job. So I read a lot about it and it's proven time and time again, that spaces that are more safe for the mo most marginalized places are the spaces that are going to last the longest. Yeah. Well, you, you, on the flip side of that, you look at places like D live where they, they have some of the moderation stuff, but it's not enforced and it's just, it's it's now a site that is filled with some of the worst, most hateful, most abusive types of people, and that's not somewhere that people want to go and grow. I don't want to go anywhere near that. Do I have anything to worry about? No, I'm a white dude. Okay, I'm a I'm yeah. I'm I'm a white dude, and no one's like I have the least problems from a systemic standpoint in this world, right? As being a white dude, um, do I want to go to a place like D Live where I will not have problems. No, absolutely not. Because I don't want my community over there. I don't want to take my community anywhere near that dumpster fire. And I want to make yeah. sure that they, they're somewhere where they feel safe, where they feel like they can kind of set up and, and have a home. Um, Cause a lot of us have come to, you know, think of Twitch as sort of a home. Um, we've met a lot of people through here, a lot of friends, um, people that we wouldn't have met otherwise. And, you know, to, to move to a new platform to try to maybe give ourselves that next boost um, or to move somewhere where we can have everything in one place. That's going to be crucial is making sure that it's a safe place. And I think that is a, I, I love that y'all have that focus in place. That's really cool. Yeah. I mean, I was on Twitch, what, 2015, 2016, when I, 2015, when I first got on and like, I would, it, I think I would be lying if I didn't say that like being at a new place is still is is very different because I loved the Twitch community. I do love the Twitch community. Um, 
my moderators are my real life friends. When I moved to California, they actually lived near me. And one of them helped me find my first apartment. Two of the other ones helped me watch my dog when she was still around. They would come stay at my place when I would travel for work, which was a lot. Um, so the community was very, very good to me. And I feel in some ways absolutely terrified, but very honored that so many people on, on Twitter who've seen me talking about live space have made comments like they're going to test it out or they feel hopeful because I came. That's both a lot of pressure, but also very, very humbling that, you know, like I made such a nice impression on people. I mean, Tom, I give Tom a lot of shit, but Tom's my best friend and we quite literally married each other. Like we actually performed each other's wedding ceremonies. So, you know, it's, it's, I trust me, I get that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I I think that for me, you know, live space, it's when I was doing my initial research, live space looked like, you know, it was a good place and it had like, frankly, I appreciate the revenue model, um, where creators can pay to get advanced stuff. And, you know, again, I know ads are going to be a part of it, but if I'm able to actually in, you know, it's my way of investing in the service that's sort of a vote of confidence that I know that, you know, they're going to take your live space is going to take that money and do something good with it and continue to improve the service. Um, and Tom's right. Tom's absolutely right. Like I saw that when you came on board, um, I, you know, I noticed that in the discord, um, not long after I joined the discord, you had mentioned that you had, or like not long since or before I joined, you had mentioned that you would come on as head of community and I'm like, who is this person? So I look it up and I'm like, that to me was a good sign. Like for somebody who has your experience, who's done what you've done to kind of put your, you know, coming on to do a job like this, you're basically putting your stamp of approval on this and saying, yes, I agree with, you know, what they're doing here. This, this looks good to me. And so, uh, I think it does say a lot to have someone with, Again, your background, your experience, your knowledge, and your set of values on a service like this, um, because you've done a, you did a lot at Twitch, not just around charity, but like you said, around a lot of the diversity programs and and having a lot of the um, different diversity celebrations on Twitch, and to have someone like you on the team there really does, I think, speak volumes to what you know yeah. what the potential is here. Yeah, and I, I just gotta say that like when we put that blog post out and we were like, we stand by the principles, Black Lives Matter, trans rights are human rights and disabled people exist. I and every company, both in consulting and working, being that bold about standing for those values is always been something people flinch at. And I gotta say, they didn't have any comment to me other than to fix a grammar mistake. Like it wasn't even a discussion point. So um, for all intents and purposes, like that speaks incredible volumes to me in the type of place and the type of workplace that I'm going to have, right? Like if they're that willing and that easy to make that, to like make that stance, mm -hmm. then it's like, that means my work environment's going to be a, a really great one too. Yeah. And that's really important. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, let's see. Is there a timeline for the stream elements integration? Um, I, I want to say like, I have been told a date, <laughs> uh, but I don't want to say a date because I like to give people time, uh, for, you know, potential, you know, like tech issues and whatnot, but I will say, uh, I would be confident saying probably by the end of September. I was given a sooner date, but I'll feel comfortable saying by the end of September as right, the person who's not building it. That's fair. That's fair. As a developer, I appreciate you giving us a longer lead time just to work shit yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean it's always ideal, right? You're like if everything goes perfect, but those timelines and roadmaps are super perfect, which is why our roadmap is more like a like wish list of things to do. Um, so, yeah. And I'm always probably going to add in a little buffer. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> just a little bit. 
<laughs> Listen, I putting my product manager hat on. Yes, please absolutely build in the buffer. Please. Um, yeah, and I know like a lot of that has to, you know, we talked about like third party APIs and third party developers and chatbots and and stuff like that. Um, you know, I want to see that because again, that's one of my passion projects is working with a team um, on a bot that we use here on Twitch. Um, but I know that getting these things up and running at, to, for third parties to be able to consume, it's very different than the stuff that powers the site itself. So I know that stuff takes a lot of time to make sure that you get right. Um, so I'm... I'm really looking forward to when that happens because I know that stream elements is like the first step to that, right? Once stream elements is on board, it's now we know we have the, that third party API is being developed. We know that it's, it's happening. Otherwise stream elements wouldn't be able to work with it. That's just the way it works. So I'm really yeah. looking forward to, um, to seeing that just because I know that will eventually like become, all right, this works. Now let's work on other people to be able to integrate. That's going to be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw in um, the discord and the, the forum thread specifically about the API access going back and forth. And I was like, huh, that's tech stuff. Yeah. <laughs> those, people are like, what's API are access happening? I'm like, it's coming. And they're like, you know what it's going to be? It's coming. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> <laughs> but they're like, what What API will it be? Like, what's, I'm like, I don't, I'm the community person. All I can tell you is it's coming. So yep. I'm very excited because there are a lot of great third party tools um, and features out there. And there are some even like safety wise, like I know Siri bots really popular on Twitch for mm -hmm. safety stuff. I would love to be able to reach out to him when that stuff is ready. So. For sure. For sure. Uh, yeah, we have some stuff built into Firebot um, where we basically have a panic button. So uh, if something happens, um, like we, it's 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 base it's hate raid protection. Um, you like the streamer or the moderator can enter a command in chat. It basically locks everything down. You can set it to follower only, sub only. Um, if like a certain raid message comes through, it detects like if a message is being sent by multiple people in a short amount of time and can like time them out or ban them like it does a lot of that cool stuff built in so i know that a lot of people are going to be looking forward to building tools you know to help with that kind of thing because there can never be enough yeah. good tools to keep a community safe yeah it was it, it's always fun too being like we need a raid feature and not everyone on our team has like experience with twitch and i don't think that's necessary i actually think like being super plugged into twitch could be limiting from a mm -hmm. creative and innovative standpoint for sure. And I went through this whole thing where I was like, there's bad raids and good raids. And they're like, so we do or we don't build this. And I was like, bad raids never usually don't happen on the site. They usually come from like a Discord or another site. Um, but yeah, safety is really, really big. It's very big to everybody. Good. I love that. Um, are there plans for an additional multimedia sharing besides emotes? Um, in stream chat? Maybe, I don't know if we're gonna go the animated emote route. I am, it is a whole level of thing to moderate. I imagine at some point in time, we will look to try to integrate something like Giphy or like, I think Giphy's in integrated everywhere. Yeah. So I wanna say yes, I haven't talked to anyone about that. So don't quote me, but I feel confident that like, that's a reasonable thing we would do. That's a very, we'll look into it. <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's a solid maybe. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, Leona, I saw your question, and yes, go get that username now. Go get it. You can go get it now. You can start streaming today. I've done it. I streamed last Sunday. It was great. Um, once again, if you haven't, go to LiveSpace, get your username, get your account set up, uh, go follow Alyssa on LiveSpace. Um, she does stream every once in a while. She'll do like co-working, body doubling stream, stuff like that. Um, and then... Uh, if you haven't already, let me get, where's, if I can type, I can't type. I don't know how to type my own name. I can type everything but my own name. And there you go. Go follow me on LiveSpace. Uh, follow me here. Also, I'm not going anywhere. Um, you know, LiveSpace still has a ways to go, but I am very excited to see where this is going. Um, Jumpy, thank you. Thank you for being here. And 
Alyssa, thank you again for doing this. This has been so much fun, and I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, it's it's really great. I think the more I talk about live space, the more I've worked with the community, the more excited I've gotten. Um, I gotta say, like, I was apprehensive too, like, but the more, like, I've really thought about it, and I really do believe that live space can go. I think it can take off, and I think it can be a good place for creators. And um, if it's not, I'll be the first one to admit it. Well, Mainly because I am a really bad liar. So that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Listen, you know what? That's honestly a really good trait to have in a community manager is someone who's bad at lying. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'll never say anything that's a lie, uh, which is also why I'm really good at picking my words. <laughs> that's there you go. There you go. That works. Um, all right. Thank you again. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up. Um, I don't think we're gonna. I don't think we're gonna raid out to anybody tonight. Um, we're just gonna call it a night. But um, thank you again to Alyssa and to the live. The blah, blah, blah. if I can speak. Thank you again to Alyssa and the Live Space team. There, I said it. Look at me go. Um, thank you for everybody who came to hang out tonight, and y'all had some amazing questions. Um, I know we've got some of the great community voices uh, from Live Space here, like Fawn and Jumpy. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us. Uh, I, I'm i really looking forward to seeing what happens with this service coming up in the next several months. Um, I will be over there some more. Um, I don't know when my next stream over there will be, but uh, we got to plan another community night soon. And listen, I, yes. I'm just saying... I've got, I'm back on my Fortnite bullshit, so you know. I don't know if I can stomach Fortnite, but I'll I'll hang out in voice chat and let y'all pick on me if y'all want. That's fair. Uh, Listen, that's what I do here normally. I sit in here and I'll play games, and my chuckle fucks will sit in voice chat with me. My mods will sit here and and give me shit all night. So, you know, it's the yeah. same thing. So. All right. Thank you all again. Um, I will see you all on Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern uh, for normal shenanigans. Uh, you were you were sometimes a very good boy. You were a sometimes very good boy. And don't you dare tell me otherwise. Uh, anyway, uh, I will see you all on Sunday. Uh, please, as always, please remember, be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and I will see you on Sunday. <laughs>